that um, as we've been asked earlier, if you want to be a Dalek, you really the most important thing is not to be claustrophobic like I am. Hello. I what I really cannot stand is enclosed spaces. Uh, so it was a bit of a difficult decision being asked to do this, but I thought I can't, I can't not do this job, you know, because it's too good an opportunity to miss. But for me, it's um, the scariest thing about the Dalek is not what it looks like on the outside; it's what it looks like on the inside. Um, so. Because uh, when the lid goes down, as it is here, with this Mr. Dial, you, you know, you're in complete darkness and you can't see, um, as I said, you can't see much through the gauze, so um, it's just those first few minutes when, you, when you're a bit claustrophobic, because those first few minutes are the moments when you might freak out and you say to yourself, it's okay, it's fine, it's going to be, it's Doctor Who, why would you not want to do this, this is going to be great. It's exciting, it's TV. Um, and then you start to calm down. I, mean, I used to suck a bowl of sweets sometimes, actually, because that often calms the nerves a bit. You know? So next time you're watching um, The Attack on Satellite 5, try and, try and work out which Daleks sucking the word as original, and that would be me. Um, moving it, actually, I'll sit here next to our Dalek operator. Moving it, as I say, it's not much like sitting on an office chair at work. You know? When you sort of, you need the staple from the desk behind you, you sort of go like that. And you go back and get the sleeper and then you come back the other way. Lots of little short steps is what you need. Um, and as I said, you have to, you have to, I've covered some of this already naturally in, in what we've said in the interview, but you've got to take lots of little short steps, haven't you, Dalek? How, yeah, they, they, I, people often on set used to wonder, is there someone in the dark? Because when it's not moving, you just don't know, you know, and sometimes people, I remember Miranda Raisin who was in Daleks in Manhattan, she was, she was obsessed with trying to work out if someone was in there. And she'd look at me for a while, and then, you, you can copy this for me, darling. And she'd, every now and again, she'd sort of go, give me a little wave, and I'd wave my plunger back, and she'd go, oh my God. Because obviously, they don't want to, um, they don't want to be talking, you know, people would often come and, like, come and have a rest on the Dalek and, and have a little bit of a gossip, not knowing I was in there. So, uh, but I used to try and save their mouths, you know, by giving a little wave, because otherwise, I'd, I'd, you know, they could be giving away all sorts of secrets that they didn't want me to hear. Um, one thing that actually was quite Hello. important was, I remember Joe O'Hearn, when he was doing the directing the first series in Daleks, he liked to do a lovely little move where first the the head would swing when, say, someone came into the room, the doctor, the head would swing around, and then the body. So, what you have to do with that Dalek, because I'm sure this Dalek will confirm, you've got to sort of already get the wheels in position first, otherwise it's going to sort of go like that. So, you've got to sort of, if Dalek could face the audience, Daleks don't tend to do what you tell them, they, they, they do what they tell them, don't they? And that's it. And then you sort of get your shopping trolley wheels so they're already pointing left, so that then, Doctor, I'll be the Doctor, Doctor's over here. Dalek, where are you going? <laughs> that's right, yes. And then, and then, with your body, that's it, you can then swing the body. Yeah, and we had to do, it was great actually, with, with the Joe Ahern episode. We, there were three Daleks, and we would all do that in, in synchronisation. The heads would swing, and then the bodies would swing. And uh, it was, I thought that looked really good, actually. And well, another thing Joe Ahern used to like, if Dalek could face the audience again, please. Uh, Daleks, I don't think he's enjoying being told what to do. I don't think that's a very natural Dalek way to be, is it? Um, he was very concerned that, um, I think because Doctor Who hadn't been on for such a long time, and Daleks had sort of become a bit of a, a joke. They're often joked about in comedy sketches and things, aren't they? And I think there was a real need to, for people to be scared of the Daleks and really believe in the Daleks, and so he wanted them to be sort of slightly animated, so he said, keep them moving, keep the eye stalk twitching, keep the gun twitching, Dalek, you know. Can you do that for me, darling? Just just keep them alive, you know, just don't have them sitting there. And he used to like a thing where um, when the Ninth Doctor would come into a room, he would say, when he appears, get that gunner stick twitching. You know, it's like they're slightly terrified of him, because they're slightly terrified of him in, in that first Christopher Eccles and Dalek. Yeah, exactly like that. It's a bit like sort of Peter Sellers and Doctor Strange Love. He wanted that feeling that, you know, Somebody mentions Nazis and it's like, get out down. It's a bit like that, you want the Daleks to be a bit like, someone mentions the Doctor and then, you know. So, um, a big part of it was just keeping that sort of animation going. Um, so, what's another thing that you might not know, but I've brought a couple of little accessories here 
that might just give you another little insight into being a Dalek. Um, because what did happen to me a few times on Dog 2 was, you've, you know, you've been to the loo, you've got comfortable, you know, the wheels are all working, and, um, and then what someone will say, and I will, um, actually, actually, before I tell you this, could we take the lid off, please? So we can see the operator. Um, I can, I can explain what it, one of the things that, oh, thank you, oh, there he is. <laughs> thank you for your demonstration so far. Now, would you mind putting something on your head in a minute? Depends <laughs> um, what would sometimes happen, it happened a few times in Doctor Who, was that so they'd say, um, right, okay, Dalek, so what we're going to do now is we're going to have some smoke, because it's a battle scene. So what we need you to do is we need you to wear one of these. Can I put this on you, please, Dalek? Or can, you, can your arms reach? Yeah, so you'd think, oh, blimey, right, I can't see. I've got, my, I've got my snood on, my black snood. I can't see through that. I can't see through the gauze. I've got to wear this as well. Okay, it's fine. I'll be okay, it's fine, it's Doctor Who, it's going to be fine. And then say, actually, someone would say, actually, also, we're going to have someone firing rifles at you. They're only blacks, don't worry, you're going to be fine. It's perfectly safe, but just in case, just in case any little bits come off the blanks. What we need you to do is we just need you to wear these, just in case any little bits come through the grill. It's going to be fine. So, uh, I'm sitting there in the dark, and, uh, my breath's coming up through the face mask and it's clouding up the goggles. <laughs> As you can see them, and I'm thinking, it's fine, it's fine. It's, it's Doctor Who, it's brilliant, it's, it's going to be fabulous. And they say, actually, um, it's going to be quite loud. I think you need to wear these as well. <laughs> so now I'm, uh, I can't see, I can't breathe, I can't hear. My head is getting, my, my, my ear defenders are getting trapped in the wire that comes from the battery up to the eye store. And uh, I'm thinking, it's okay, it's fine, it's Doctor Who, it's exciting. Um, and then, of course, they'll say, right, well, what we want you to do is we want you to get through that doorway over there. Uh, and I can see this doorway is about an inch wider than the dark. And they'll say, and we need to do it, we're running out of time, we need to do this in one take. Uh, and, I'll, and, I can, and I can't see a thing. And they let, they set the smoke off, and all I can see is whiteness. And like I said a moment ago, you're just using the force, really, you know. So, and I, I go for it, and you can guess what happens. And I hit the wall, and the set shakes. And someone comes over and says, um, "Is there a problem?" <laughs> and I say, um, "Well, yes, I can't see, I can't hear, I can't breathe." And someone says, "Oh, okay, well, fine, fine." And what we'll do is, we'll get someone. Uh, one of the props meant to push you on. So we do the take again, and they say, just lift your feet up. And someone comes up behind, shoves me through the door. I think, I'm not even doing anything now. I'm just going for a ride, I'm like, a, like a toddler in a push chair. So that is, uh, explains how odd it can be to be a Dalek at times. You, 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 sometimes it's just a matter of lifting up your feet and enjoying the ride. Thank you, Dalek, for your helping me with that demonstration.